When a coaching change is made in the National Football League, fans are very eager to dance on the former coach's grave, even if the former coach had a lot of success uh, at his former post. And with Zimmer, fans were ready for a change. And even though Zimmer did some really good things here, it was time for him to go. Uh, 74, 59, and 1 over eight seasons. A 562 winning percentage is the third best in team history behind only Bud Grant and Denny Green. Three playoff appearances, won two playoff games, one NFC title game appearance. But there needed to be more. Like, like th- there was still some chicken left on that bone and just like, Mm, definitely felt like it was underachieving, right? And when do we get to a spot as fans where we're really excited about a playoff appearance every other year? Oh, don't you know that Zimmer does really well in odd numbers years? Please, please. But respect. Zimmer built up one of the best defenses in the NFL uh, from the Leslie Frazier regime, which was the worst in 2013. Uh, tw- you could say from 2015, 16, 17, they were top tier, top tier, top tier. Absolutely. But why did things fall apart at the end? Why were the Vikings slip and fall and they can't get up in 2020 and 2021? Why did the Vikings miss the playoffs three out of Zimmer's final four years and had never been above 500 at any point since 2019? You could all blame it on injuries. You could all blame it on the Rona, but guess what? Every single team had to deal with those issues. So it does come down to coaching. It does come down to leadership. It does come down to Mike Zimmer. And what we loved about Zimmer at the start is ultimately led to his downfall. His ego, his his gruff, no BS demeanor. The Vikings needed that disciplinary taskmaster to get back on track in 2014. And also his my way or the highway approach to things. But that wore thin. It, it, it did. It, it's a lot like Winston Churchill and England, where Churchill was a phenomenal a wartime prime minister, exactly what they needed at that time. But when peace came around, a little bit awkward. A little, little bit awkward. Wasn't really time uh, for Winston at that point. All the speeches just sort of, yeah. And I think the message got stale with Zimmer, and eventually you can lose that locker room. I think that he lost him during the 2020 season and never regained it. And Zimmer was great getting the Vikings defense from a bad team to a good team, borderline great team in 2018, but they just couldn't get over that hump. And yeah, you could say that, hey, Kirk Cousins signing in 2018, that led to Zimmer's downfall because they missed at the quarterback position. Well, Early on, to a degree, yes, Kirk Cousins was not as good as advertised. He was supposed to be that missing piece in for Case Keenum to take the Vikings to the promised land. But 2020, well, after the bye in 2020 and also in 2021, Kirk Cousins was not the problem. You could say that his contract and cap hit were the problem, yes, but his actual play on the field, eh, not so much. But Zimmer, he never really meshed with Cousins. Like, it was always awkward. It was much more of a quasi-professional relationship it never really got personal but it doesn't have to be look at Brady and Belichick but they have to work together and it always seems like they're butting heads it always seems like they're at odds and that's on Zimmer to make that work like yeah he didn't get to pick his quarterback Teddy was going to be his guy before his leg fell off but it didn't work out and you had to work with Cousins and it took till year four for them to watch film together which is odd, right? And Zimmer, he, he never really got a handle on how to properly manage a game, usage of timeouts, uh, situational football, and it just came down, the Vikings were cooked uh, w- when it came down to situational time, like at the end of halves for some reason, whatever. Uh, also, he never really developed as the head coach of the entire team. It always just seemed like he was the defense coordinator with the challenge flag. Uh, his input on the offense was to keep things from the 1920s. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, his views were ancient and did not mesh with the modern game. And the fact that he was so stagnant and the fact that he didn't evolve m- meant that, hey, coaches could uh, coach around him. They could outcoach him very easily. Because after people started catching up to his defense, say about 2018, and they started to fall apart, especially over the last two years, and when other offenses caught up to his defense, they caught up to his schemes. Ultimately, he didn't have a leg to stand on. When the defense was great, he could be like, well, you know, we're working on the offense, we're working on special teams, but at least the defense is good. But the defense fell apart the last two years, and yes, I do blame Zimmer's defense and his game management for a number of Vikings' close losses this year. They ended up 8-9, and nine, just outside the playoff places, but notably, Cincinnati. Arizona, even before Greg Joseph missed kick, Dallas and Cooper Rush, Baltimore, Detroit games, all of them should have gone the Vikings way, but it, because of Zimmer's mismanagement of the game and because of his defense, er, other way, right? They should have been 13 and four, want some more, maybe even 11 and six at worst, but I, I digress there. It, it didn't happen. And so now it, it could be a blessing.
It could be a blessing because maybe if the Vikings don't win that playoff game in 2019, maybe Zimmer is showing the door and maybe he's the head coach of the Cowboys and maybe Kevin Stefanski, a young offensive, uh, offensive focused head coach is here in Minnesota. But, you know, that's playing with history, butterfly effect, uh, effect and whatnot. And also Zimmer's gruff, no nonsense demeanor. It is from a different time. You know, back when. Uh, the men were men, and the coaches were revered, and there was no water breaks and all, all that stuff. Two days in the heat. Like, talk about Junction Boys with Bear Bryant back in the day. But I'm not saying that uh, players today are soft millennials, but I'm also not not saying that, you know? Because Zimmer's, like, if you plop Zimmer back in the 1950s, like, he would be at home in terms of coaching football. But today's modern game... You have to have some carrots. It can't just be all stick, man. And Zimmer has not always been the most tactile when it came to talking about players in the media. Kind of a low EQ situation. And that does weigh on the locker room. Because if you're a player and you see your coach throw you under the bus in the media, in the press, whether it's your performance, whether you're coming back from an injury or can't make the club in the tub, that weighs on you. It's like, hey, this dude's going to sell me out and impact my money. And then other players see that and they don't like that. They hate that, man. And also, when it came to, well, Justin Jefferson could have broke the record. I, I knew it, but I'm focused on winning, please. Well, he's already gone by that point, so it doesn't matter there, I, I guess. But you can be a dictator in college or in high school uh, with kids, and Nick Saban found that out. He can be that dictator at LSU, at Michigan State, at Alabama, but in the NFL... That doesn't fly. When you're trying to coach grown-ass men where most of them make more money than you, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to fly, man. Now, also Zimmer's inability to play and develop young players, I mean, that has to be talked about. Uh, the whole trope of, well, Zimmer never plays the rookies outside of first and second round picks. It's true. It's kind of true. And also, he's supposed to be this cornerback guru, but when was the last time he developed a uh, day three draft pick or UDFA draft pick at corner, even though he said that he could find cover two corners down at the 7-Eleven? We don't even have 7-Elevens in the state. Quick trip for life. But mm, I, I digress. But remember the good times with Zimmer? He had 2017, most of it, even though it would have been nice to win a Super Bowl. That was a Super Bowl season. At home, by the way. But Philly, Minneapolis Miracle... It's well, whatever. Also, Daniel Carlson, by the way. Daniel Carlson is going to be a perennial all pro. But yeah, let's get rid of him after two games because reasons. I don't know, man. I don't know. But yeah, uh, like I said, it's very easy to pile on Zimmer today. But remember, there were some good times. And I think that yeah, it was time for a change. That's all. Uh, but your thoughts are on thoughts. Why did the Zimmer regime fail at the end? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.